Good morning and welcome to Worship with Basingstoke Salvation Army this morning. I'm so glad that you're able to join with us again this morning. We have felt connected over the last few weeks as we have worshipped together in this way, even though we're scattered in homes around Basingstoke and further afield as well, even into other countries. And we're glad that you're able to join with us. It's been good too to connect with some of you over chat before the meeting began this morning and uh, it's good to encourage each other in this way. Today is a very special day in the Salvation Army in the United Kingdom with the Republic of Ireland Territory in that today is Candidate Sunday, a Sunday that we set apart each year to just focus our minds and our hearts on the call that God has to a number of us to full-time ministry as a Salvation Army officer. Maybe you are that person who's watching today who senses that call and may this meeting be an encouragement to you to reach out and to start to explore that call. But for those of us who are not called to full-time Salvation Army ministry, many of us are called to local leadership and local service, and we can think about that today too as we go through our meeting. And we also need to think about the ways that we encourage those who are called to full-time ministry. How do we support them? How do we encourage our young people and people of any age to answer the call of God on their lives? So welcome. And I'm glad that you're able to be with us as we go through uh, this Candidate Sunday worship this morning. I invite you to start uh, worship this morning with this call to worship, responsive call to worship, if you follow the words on the screen and read the words in yellow. Come Lord and be one with us. We invite you to open our hearts to receive your love. Come now Lord and pour your love into our lives once again. Come, Lord, and be one with us. We invite you to open our eyes to see your glory. Come now, Lord, for we are waiting to see your face. Come, Lord, and be one with us. We invite you to open our minds to understand your grace. Come now, Lord for we want to experience all the blessings you want to give us. Come, Lord, and be one with us. Come now, Lord. We are waiting and watching and listening. We are ready to encounter your glory and seek your will for our lives. Come, Lord, and keep us alert to your calling. Come now, Lord. We are ready to honour you with our very being. Amen. Some of us might think that Candidate Sunday is not for us. It's for someone else. Someone younger, maybe. Someone different. Someone more confident. It's easy for us to get the wrong idea about how God calls people. We think about it as a solitary thing, and it can be, but think about this. Just as they say it takes a village to raise a child, maybe it takes a corps to raise a candidate. And since corps is just another word for body, what if the Holy Spirit uses many parts of the body to call one woman or man to become an officer? or territorial envoy. Ask a hundred officers how they first felt their calling, you might get a hundred different answers. Some will say it crept up on them slowly, a little more every day. Others were like Saul on the Damascus road, a bolt from the blue, suddenly they knew. Some will have wrestled like Jacob until they couldn't fight it anymore. Because all people are gloriously different, the way we hear a call to service can be as different as we are. In these days around Candidate Sunday, we all have a part to play. If it takes a corps to raise an officer or a territorial envoy, it takes all of us to pray. 
some of us to talk and encourage, and some of us to hear the call and to say, yes, tell me more. This might be for me. Whether we're called to full-time ministry as a Salvation Army officer or not, as Christians we are each called to live a life of sacrifice. And so in our first song we're going to tell God that we dare to live that life of faith. And in the third verse we're going to sing, I dare to want to live like Christ, according to his will and way, his love to know, compassion share, and serve him boldly every day. Each one of us can serve him boldly every day in whatever capacity we do that in. And so we dare to be different. Please enjoy this song as we sing along together. Gratitude for leadership. Father God, 
Thank you for our core leader, our officers and territorial envoys. Thank you for calling them and thank you that they responded to your call. Thank you for their willingness to serve you with their lives and to go where you need them to be. Thank you for the way they lead us and teach us truths and show by their example what holiness is. Thank you for the salvation they have received and that they want everyone to receive it too and be free from the power of sin. Thank you, Father, for those who have been influenced by their lives and are now responding to your call for them. Thank you for their adventurous spirit and the vision they have for the mission of seeing lives changed. Thank you for keeping them alert to your promptings and obedient to your voice. Father, thank you that you continue to call your people to be leaders in your church, to be pastors and preachers, to be servants to the poor and mentors to the searching, to be carers of the sick and compassionate to the unloved. Thank you that you can use every one of us to reach out to another person in love and forgiveness. Thank you for examples of faithfulness and for people of prayer. Help me to fit in too and be alert to what you want me to offer of myself in your church. I offer this prayer from a thankful heart. Amen. Thank you to Majors Ron and Elaine for leading us through that time of prayer this morning, showing gratitude to God for our leaders and for those who are called to leadership, both in full-time service and in local leadership in the Salvation Army and in the Christian Church in general. Our junior choir are going to sing to us together now. We thank Andy for putting this together. The young people have recorded this individually in their homes and then Andy's put it together into this song which says, I can do anything. The young people are going to remind us that we can do anything that God calls us to because God doesn't call the equipped, he equips the called. Oh 
This morning's Bible reading is taken from Exodus chapter 4 verses 1 to 13 and I'm reading from the New Living Translation. But Moses protested again. What if they won't believe me or listen to me? What if they say, the Lord never appeared to you? Then the Lord asked him, what is that in your hand? A shepherd's staff, Moses replied. Throw it down on the ground, the Lord told him. So Moses threw down the staff and it turned into a snake. Moses jumped back. Then the Lord told him, reach out and grab its tail. So Moses reached out and grabbed it and it turned back into a shepherd's staff in his hand. Perform this sign, the Lord told him. Then they will believe that the Lord, the God of their ancestors, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac and the God of Jacob, really has appeared to you. Then the Lord said to Moses, Now put your hand inside your cloak. So Moses put his hand inside his cloak, and when he took it out again, his hand was white as snow, with a severe skin disease. Now put your hand back into your cloak, the Lord said. So Moses put his hand back in, and when he took it out again, it was as healthy as the rest of his body. The Lord said to Moses, If they do not believe you and are not convinced by the first miraculous sign, they will be convinced by the second sign. And if they don't believe you or listen to you, even after these two signs, then take some water from the Nile River and pour it out on the dry ground. When you do, the water from the Nile will turn to blood on the ground. But Moses pleaded with the Lord. O oh Lord, I'm not very good with words. I never have been, and I'm not now. Even though you have spoken to me, I get tongue-tied and my words get tangled. The Lord asked Moses, Who makes a person's mouth? Who decides whether people speak or do not speak, hear or do not hear, see or do not see? Is it not I, the Lord? Now go. I will be with you as you speak, and I will instruct you in what to say. But Moses pleaded again, Lord, please send anyone else. Thank you to Nicola for reading our Bible reading this morning. We're going to sing a great modern worship song together now from the Rend Collective, Build Your Kingdom Here, reminding us that as the church, as the Christian church, we have the opportunity, we have the calling to build God's kingdom here, to change the atmosphere in our communities, to make a difference. Uh, but we have to do that by sacrificing our lives, by laying down our lives to do what God has called us to do. In this third verse, we're going to sing, Unleash your kingdom's power, reaching the near and far. No force of hell can stop your beauty, changing hearts. You made us for much more than this. This is the idea of realising your full potential in God by answering his call on your life, whatever that call might be. You made us for much more than this. Awake the kingdom seed in us. Fill us with the strength and love of Christ. We are your church. We are the hope on earth. Let's sing together. Build your kingdom here.
Hello everyone, here are the announcements for the days ahead of us. Immediately after this service, you're invited to join us for a virtual coffee fellowship. At 3.30 this afternoon, our young people will be meeting for their virtual Sunday school. And that at eight o'clock this evening, there is a virtual youth fellowship. And this week it takes the form of a youth cell quiz. And that will be open to everyone. So there'll be a wide range of rounds that everyone can enjoy. And that is at eight o'clock this evening. Tomorrow at 2.15, you're invited to join for an online Tai Chi gentle exercise class. And on Wednesday at 11.30 in the morning, virtual coffee stop. And that takes us to Thursday when just after the clap for NHS, at just after 8 o'clock, there will be a virtual prayer meeting. Next Friday is the 75th anniversary of VE Day. And to commemorate this, there will be at 7.15 in the evening, a VE Day concert, which will feature stirring and reflective Salvation Army music to commemorate this important anniversary. And uh, the details for how to connect to that are indeed the same as you use for streaming on Sundays. That takes us to next Sunday. And again, we'll be streaming our service at 11 a.m. Uh, continuing our thinking of Beyond Easter, the theme this week will be Eat Your Heart Out. I mentioned last week, but I'll reiterate it again, that uh, it's no surprise that the SBNS Roadshow scheduled for May to Basingstoke has been cancelled. Some sad news. Jean Bennett has been promoted to glory and we give thanks to God for the life and service of her. She was promoted to glory from Basingstoke Hospital last Thursday evening. We've now learned from Stan's daughter, Val, that Jean tested positive for coronavirus whilst in hospital. And although she rallied for a while, she deteriorated during last week. So please remember Stan, Val and Mark at this time. Val has asked that we hold a celebration of life service for Jean once we are meeting again. And we will, of course, let you know the details of the funeral and other uh, events around this as soon as we have the details. Continue to pray for Jean, Stan and their family at this time. We pray for other friends who need our prayers as well. Particularly, we think of Peter Barlow, Elaine Godfrey, Brian Sharp, Brian Hooper, Nikki's dad, Brian, and Nikki herself, and Tony and the family as Brian continues to undergo chemotherapy. And also for Stan following, as we said, the promotion to glory of Jean. We also pray for Nick Turrell and the staff and residents of St. Thomas's Care Home, especially my dad, Derek Hasking, and Richard Rugman and the rest of the families affected by the outbreak of COVID at that facility. And finally, we once again give thanks and ask for your prayers for those of our core family uh, in the persons of Ebby and Sue, who are, who are involved in working on the front line for the NHS during this situation. May God bless you. Thank you to Stuart for keeping us informed through the announcements this week. The theme of our meeting this morning is realising your full potential and uh, as we open God's word that Nicola read to us a little while ago in a few moments we're going to learn that realising our full potential means answering God's call on our life and following his will making sure that our will is aligned with his and so we're going to sing together this great song teach me to dance to the beat of your heart this picture of dancing with God as our wills entwine with his and so in this uh, second verse we're going to sing let all my movements express a heart that loves to say yes my prayer for each one of us is that as we come towards the end of our worship this morning and as we think about what God is saying to us through his word that we will want to say yes that we will want to align our wills with his whatever he is calling us to do so let's sing together Teach me to dance to the beat of your heart.
before I bring you the Bible message this morning, we're going to listen to a beautiful song. What those of us who have answered God's call have found in whatever capacity is that when we've said yes, when our hearts have said yes, then we discover more and more about God and we grow closer and closer to him. When we step out of the boat, when we step onto the water, we become closer to him. And so we're going to listen to this beautiful song from Hillsong called Oceans, Where Feet May Fail. It's going to be sung by our youth chorus, the Central South Youth Chorus. And uh, I chose this recording particularly this morning because actually in normal times, if our churches had been open, then our youth chorus would have been uh, leading meetings at the Salvation Army in High Wycombe. And so we think of our young people as we listen to them sing this song to us this morning.
It was 2005 when I first began to notice my dissatisfaction with life as a lawyer. I'd been a solicitor for nine years by that point, and for much of that time it had been fun. But in 2005, there was a change in the way that my discipline was organised, and that took the fun right out of it. Much of the work I was doing, therefore, became drudgery and administrative, and I became tired of hearing public authorities telling my clients that I wasn't really needed by them anymore. I'd become frustrated by office politics and disillusioned with the constant striving to try and make partnership. It seemed to me that every time I was close to promotion, the goalposts seemed to move and I was back to square one. It was four years later in a candidate's farewell meeting as we said goodbye to some friends who were moving to William Booth College for their training that I heard Major Mandy White say, I know someone in this congregation is called to officership. And I clearly heard God say, it's you. That was what started me along the road to full-time ministry as an officer in the Salvation Army. It's only as I look back on it now that I see that my dissatisfaction with my life as a lawyer was all part of God's calling. It's often said that if you want to walk on water, then you have to get out of the boat. And I came to understand that this sole dissatisfaction that I had was God's way of rocking my boat so that I was encouraged to get out of it. In the end, it became easier to step out of the boat and walk on the water and take a step towards God's calling than it was to stay in the rocky boat. I came to realise that I was not where I ought to be. And so the question that I want to ask you this morning is, are you where you ought to be? Poe wasn't. Poe is the star of the animated film Kung Fu Panda. Now, you're going to be surprised to learn that Poe is a panda who wants to learn Kung Fu. But Poe's father has a different dream for him. He wants Poe to take over the family restaurant business. One night, Poe dreams of learning Kung Fu and the next day his father asks him what he was doing overnight. Let's watch Poe's response. What were you dreaming about? What was I... Uh, I was dreaming about, uh, uh, noodles. Noodles? You were really dreaming about noodles? Uh, yeah. What else would I be dreaming about? Oh, careful, that soup is sharp. Oh, happy day. My son finally having the noodle dream. Oh, 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 oh. You don't know how long I've been waiting for this moment. This is a sign, Bo. Uh... A sign of what? You are almost ready to be entrusted with the secret ingredient of my secret ingredient soup. And then you will fulfill your destiny and take over the restaurant. Just as I took it over from my father, who took it over from his father, who won it from a friend in a game of mahjong. Dad, 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 it was just a dream. <laughs> no, it was the dream. We are noodle folk. Broth runs through our veins. But dad, didn't you ever... I don't know, want to do something else? Something besides noodles? Actually, when I was young and crazy, I thought about running away and learning how to make tofu. So why didn't you? Oh, because it was a stupid dream. Can you imagine me making tofu? <laughs> tofu. <laughs> no, we all have our place in this world. Mine is here and yours is- I know, is here. No. It's a table two, five, seven, and twelve. Service with a smile. students. If you were trying to disappoint me, tigers, you need more ferocity. Monkey, greater speed. Crane, height. Piper, subtlety. Mantis. Master Shifu. What? Ah! It's Master Ugwe. He wants to see you. Master Ugwe, you summoned me. Is something wrong?
Why must something be wrong for me to want to see my old friend? So, nothing's wrong? Well, I didn't say that. Are you where you ought to be? Are you serving noodles when in fact you should be practicing Kung Fu? Or as Jesus put it, are you fishing for fish instead of fishing for men? Being where you ought to be, being where God wants you to be, may well be the difference between, for example, teaching the three R's and teaching God's word to the souls of the people. It might mean the difference between organising paper or people and marshalling God's troops against the forces of evil in the world. It might mean the difference between ensuring that people are connected to their PCs or ensuring that people are connected to their creator. You get the picture, don't you? Are you where you ought to be? In the passage that we looked at earlier this morning, we discovered that Moses is not where he ought to be. And as so often happens, God gets straight to the point. If you have a look at verse 2 in Exodus chapter 4, it says, Then the Lord asked Moses, What is that in your hand? A shepherd's staff, Moses replied. What Moses had in his hand was his shepherd's staff, but it was more than a shepherd's staff. It was a constant reminder that he had never reached his fullest potential in God. You see, Moses was born with the purpose of delivering God's people from slavery. As part of that purpose, as part of that calling, God had caused him to be adopted by Pharaoh's daughter so that he could be taught all the wisdom of the Egyptians and become powerful in both speech and action. As part of that calling, as part of that purpose, God moved Moses' heart to take pity on his fellow Israelites' plight as slaves in Egypt. But Moses was impatient. He took matters into his own hand and he killed an Egyptian for beating one of his fellow Hebrews. After the murder, he became afraid that people would find out what he'd done and so he fled from Pharaoh, he fled Egypt and he lived in the land of Midian. Moses came to believe that despite God's calling on his life, he was worthy of no more than being a shepherd. And so his shepherd's staff was a constant reminder that he'd missed God's calling. He was not where he ought to be. The shepherd's staff reminded Moses that he used to be a prince, but now he was a servant. The shepherd's staff reminded Moses that he used to be rich and with influence, but now he was poor. He had nothing and he'd lost his influence. The shepherd's staff reminded Moses that once he had potential, but now it seems he'd missed that potential. Moses could no longer see his potential, but praise God, God could still see his potential. And so we see in verse 3 that God says, throw the shepherd's staff down on the ground. So Moses threw down the staff and it turned into a snake. Moses jumped back. In God's hand, the ordinary becomes extraordinary. In God's hand, Moses' shepherd's staff, a dry piece of wood, becomes an extraordinary snake. A dry staff becomes a living, lively snake, something formidable, something so strong that Moses, although as a shepherd he must have been used to seeing snakes, jumped back from it. It wouldn't be the last time in Moses' life that God would take something ordinary and do something extraordinary with it. If you know anything about Moses' story and the people of Israel in Egypt, then just think for a moment about the ten plagues that God called down on Egypt as he worked to free his people from captivity. On the face of it, there's nothing out of the ordinary in things like blood, frogs, gnats, flies, animal disease, boils, thunderstorms, hail, fire, locusts, even darkness. But God took those ordinary things and showed Pharaoh and the Egyptians who he was by doing something unexpected, something extraordinary with them. 
And he did the same again with Moses' shepherd staff too. Because it was Moses' shepherd staff that confronted the Egyptian magicians. It was Moses' shepherd staff that turned the waters of Egypt to blood. It was the shepherd staff that brought up the plagues of frogs and gnats and thunder and hail and lightning. It was that ordinary piece of wood, that shepherd staff, that was used to cause the east wind to blow in the plague of locusts. It was the shepherd's staff that Moses used to part the Red Sea so that the Israelites could escape the pursuing Egyptian army. And it was that same ordinary piece of wood that was used to bring the water together again to drown the Egyptian army as it has followed God's people into the Red Sea. Even later on in Moses' life, it was used to bring water from a rock in the wilderness and to ensure victory over the Amalekites. If God could do all of that with a simple, ordinary stick of wood, imagine what he could do with Moses and imagine what he can do with you and me. Francis Schaeffer writes these words. Consider the mighty ways in which God used a dead stick of wood. God so used a stick of wood can be a banner cry for each of us. Though we are limited and weak in talent, physical energy and psychological strength, we are not less than a stick of wood. But as the rod of Moses had to become the rod of God, so that which is me must become the me of God. Then I can become useful in God's hands. The scripture emphasises that much can come from little if the little is truly consecrated to God. Now you may sense God saying to you today as you listen to this message that you are not where you ought to be, just like he said to Moses. Maybe just at this moment God is revealing your shepherd's staff to you in your hands. Perhaps you feel this morning like Moses that you've missed the full potential in life. Maybe like Moses, your past is controlling you. Maybe, as for Moses, guilt is holding you back. Perhaps like Moses, this morning you just feel ordinary, as if you have very little to give to God. When God spoke to Moses from the burning bush and commissioned him as the one to lead God's people out of Egypt, Moses came up with all sorts of excuses. Moses really felt he was a nobody, that, that no one would listen to him. He felt he, he didn't know enough about God to be able to show him to the people. Moses felt he just wouldn't be believed as a messenger of God. He felt he, he just couldn't speak on God's behalf. Moses' whole response to God and his calling was, oh, not me, not my calling, please send someone else. But when God looked at Moses, he saw his potential. And when God looks at you, he sees your potential too. As you look at yourself, you may see the ordinary, the, the shepherd's staff, the, the piece of dry wood. But God looks at you and he sees the extraordinary if only you would give yourself into his hands. If you want your life to be used for God's glory, then place it into his hands this morning. God said to Moses as he, as he asked him to look at his shepherd's staff, your potential is in your hands. Throw it down and see what I can do with it. In that moment, God asked Moses to throw down his most treasure, treasured possession. You see, his shepherd's staff was the one thing that he needed in order to make a living as a shepherd. It was indispensable to him, essential. But God said to him, throw it down, place it in my hands. On that day, as Moses decided whether or not to obey God and to throw the staff down, he must have realised that he might never see his staff again. He had no idea what God was going to do it. with it. He might be giving up his means for making a living. I wonder, is God asking you 
to make the same sacrifice today, to give up your livelihood, to give up your way of life, and to sacrifice it to God in full-time ministry in the Salvation Army. Then my encouragement to you this morning is throw it down and see what God can do with it. He can make something extraordinary out of the ordinary when we give it in obedient, faithful service. We're going to listen to a beautiful song with words by Chick Ewell and music by John Martin. And the words will include, Lord, I know your presence. Hear your call to service. Be what I want you to be. Servant to your brothers. Give your life for others as I did on Calvary. Come follow me on the way of the cross. This is the moment to be free. God is saying to you this morning, realise your full potential. And our response has to be, Lord, I respond to your claims on my life with obedience to all that you will ask, following you in the way of the cross. This will be my task. If you sense as you listen to this message that God is calling you to full-time service in the Salvation Army, then please do drop me an email and we can chat it through. My email address is at the bottom of the screen. And if, on the other hand, you are certain this morning that you are where God wants you to be, then God bless you as you serve him in whatever capacity he has called you to do and as you support and encourage those who are looking into uh, and investigating full-time service for him.
My prayer is that as you reflect on our worship this morning, your heart will want to say yes. Your heart will want to obey Christ in whatever he is calling you to do just now. But whatever capacity God is calling to us to, as salvationists, we are all called to win the world for Jesus. And so we go out with this fantastic song that says, Soldiers of our God, arise. It may be more difficult in lockdown to storm the forts of darkness, but we can learn ways of doing that as the Salvation Army and as Christians. So please join together as we sing, Soldiers of our God, arise. And after we've sung that song, I invite you to take part in the responsive benediction. Again, following the words that will come on the screen. May God bless you this week as you go out and answer his call, as you realise your full potential by aligning your will with his, and as you storm the forts of darkness and seek to win the world for Jesus. Let's pray together. Look at your hands. God made them for a purpose. See the touch and usefulness. We shall use them to do God's work. Look at your feet. God made them for a purpose. See the direction and example. 
we shall use them to do God's work. Look into your heart. God made it for a purpose. See the love and determination. We shall use it to do God's work. Look at the cross. God made it for a purpose. See God's Son, the Saviour. We shall follow him in God's work. Look at your world. God made it for a purpose. See where God calls you to serve him. We shall go out and do God's work. May the God who loves you endlessly lead you from belief into action. Amen. Amen.